I'm about to show you how to etch powder coated stainless steel tumblers with the help of a Cricut. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and first and foremost, I have been so obsessed with this idea since I saw it on TikTok from M2C1 Designs. Go check her out, spread some crafty love, give her a follow because this idea is just pure brilliance. Like it's so, so, so genius. We are etching powder coated stainless steel tumblers actually with citrus strip. Now, truth be told, this actually gives you a look that rivals a laser and it's with the help of a Cricut. So first things first, we will obviously need a stainless steel tumbler that is coated. And I'm using this one right here from Amazon. Now this is more of like a powder coated finish to it, but I will also say this, this process does not work on all coated tumblers. It just doesn't. I went and bought a bunch of them to test it out. Some of them it worked great on, others not so much. So you will definitely want to run some tests with this before you commit to actually etching out an entire tumbler. I'll show you how to do that here shortly. We will also need a Cricut or really any cutting machine as long as it works with SVG cut files. We'll need some vinyl, some other things that we'll get to when we get to it but we will also need a design to etch into our tumbler. And so we are using this one right here, over here on crafty.net, this leopard print pattern. And we will also be adding a name to it with this font right here, also from crafty.net, this sketchy font, which is honestly so wildly popular. Y'all are flipping y'all's lids over this. It's so, so, so good. And we will also be using one additional file and that is this one right here this 20 ounce tapered skinny tumbler template on crafty.net. Now, in case you are new to all this, basically you get unlimited access, unlimited downloads to all 18,000 plus designs on crafty.net for less than 10 bucks a month. Or honestly, I would I would go for the yearly option because it's even cheaper, saves even more money. It's like 107.89 for the entire year. It's just like so completely mad and I'm obsessed with it. And that does include a commercial license. Crafty is adding over 1000 additional files each and every single month. So what I'll do is go in here and do a one click download for all of these files. And then let's head over here to Cricut Design Space. So as you can see, I do have this already uploaded into the Cricut Design Space Canvas. If you're not entirely sure how to do that, there is a playlist down below. All right, so here is our template here. Here is our pattern right here. And we will also be using that sketchy font for the name. So let's come over here, click on text, and then just type out whatever name you want to add in here. It honestly doesn't even need to be a name. You can do whatever you want to. All right, so there is our name. Let's go ahead and come up here to font to switch this over. Let's just do a search for sketchy. There it is right there. Let's go ahead and click on that. And there is our name. Beautiful, right? Now, there is this little template right here that's basically for our for our tumbler. Now, this is a skinny tumbler, but it is a tapered skinny tumbler, which basically means that it looks like it's just a, a regular skinny tumbler, but there is a slight taper to it. Now, I will also say this, this template right here is a generic template. It's not gonna fit every single tapered skinny tumbler out there. However, you can actually do a little, a little test run with this like I did. I just went ahead and cut this out onto some cardstock. So this is the cardstock that I cut out right here just because I wanted to make sure that this was actually gonna fit the tumbler before I went through with the entire project. So basically I just cut it and you can just kind of wrap it around here like so. That fits pretty darn well. So always do a little test run just to make sure. And with something like inexpensive like cardstock, it just works, all right? So let's come back over here to Cricut Design Space. And one of the things I wanna point out is down here at the bottom of Cricut Design Space. This says, ensure that the size measures 9.313 inches wide and 8.21 inches deep. And that's basically just there to let y'all know that sometimes Cricut Design Space can be a little weird with how they imports files. So if it doesn't come in at the right size, it's all right to just go ahead and change it to be this size. However, the size that it is factoring in is the blue layer, not this layer with like the little grid on top of it. So let's come over here to the layers panel and actually click on the little eye icon next to this little grid on top of that blue layer. And then just clicking on this, we can see up here on the size that it is the right size. We are good to go on that. We can go ahead and unhide our little grid. 
just so we can kind of line things up the way we want it. As far as this file goes, I'm gonna go ahead and right click it, click on send it back. And then let's go ahead and bring Alyssa's name over here. We can kind of hover over here at the corners because Cricut Design Space did update where um, we don't really have the rotation handle in the same way anymore or the resize handle in the same way. I mean, I'm not mad about it. It's just a little bit different, that's all. So let me go ahead and rotate this. And holding down that shift key will make it rotate in increments like so. And then we can go ahead and resize this. I'm also going to come up here while that is selected to letter space and just increase the spacing between those letters. Just like that right there. I think that looks good. And then let's go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right and click on weld. There we go. So the name is good to go. Let's go ahead and hide that grid again on top of our little template. Bring over our little cheetah pattern print and then just basically resize this. All right, so I'm thinking that that right there looks pretty good. And this is made to be like a repeating pattern. So this should hopefully line up pretty well overall <laughs> um, whenever it goes to match up. I mean, there might be a little bit of a gap, but it should be all right. Um, however, as you will notice, there is two different colors to this. Now we are gonna be etching into a stainless steel tumbler. We can't really have like multiple colors for something like this basically one pattern, one print to etch into the into the tumbler. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and click on this little eye icon to hide that brown layer. And basically we'll just go ahead and etch this into that like so. All right, so as far as Alyssa's name, we could just go ahead and put it right over here on top of the tumbler as well. However, you can see that there's a problem with that, right? So with that, we basically need to make sure that there is space around each of the letters to make sure that you can actually read her name. So let's go ahead and come up here to offset. And when we click on that, we can see the little natural offset that is created around her name. Let's go ahead and drag that up, just pinch, and then click on apply. All right, so now let's go ahead and bring this over here and onto that little leopard print pattern. And then holding down the shift key, let's click on that leopard print pattern and then come up here to align and then click on center. Now, while both of those are still selected, let's go ahead and come down here and click on slice. Now, if slice isn't working for you for whatever reason, make sure that you only have two layers selected. It will not work if you have one layer selected. It will not work if you have three or more layers selected. So just something to check into. All right, so as far as that offset, we don't need that anymore. Let's go ahead and delete that out. And the remnants of that print, we don't need that anymore either. So there we go. Then let's go ahead and bring her name right over here and fit it in like so. Let's go ahead and hold down the shift key, click on the pattern, click on a line, and then click on center yet again. And then while both of those are still selected, let's come down here and click on weld to fuse that as one single solid image. All right, so one last little thing. You can see that there is part of our design hanging off down here at the edge of the template. Basically, they're just like little cliffhangers at this point. Let me go ahead and click and drag over both of those. Come down here, click on slice. And basically that should just go ahead and slice everything that we need out of that template. And that template will serve as our stencil of sorts for our tumbler. So let's go ahead and grab that, bring that over here. That's looking pretty good to me. I don't know about y'all, but I like it. Let's go ahead and click and drag over all this and then delete all that out. And then here is what we'll be using to wrap around our tumbler and actually etch our design into the tumbler itself. So cool. So let's go ahead and come up here to the top right, click on make it. We don't need to do anything here. Let's click on continue. Let's go ahead, turn our maker on. And for our stencil, for our vinyl, what I'm doing is using a permanent adhesive vinyl. That's just honestly not my favorite. So first and foremost, it's just not the StarCraft HD. The StarCraft HD is like my ride or die vinyl choice at this point. I love this stuff. Plus it's glossy. Glossy is just not my jam. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. And let's go ahead and load this onto the mat. I would also suggest just using a color that you really don't love as much, all right? So there is that. Now for that cut setting, let's come over here, click on premium vinyl permanent glossy, and let's go ahead and get started cutting. All right, so I know people will be asking, can you use removable vinyl instead of the permanent like I'm using today? Some people will also be asking, can you use a stencil film vinyl in, instead of the permanent vinyl? Now here's the thing, I did try the removable vinyl and it just did not hold as well to the tumbler as I would have liked. And because of that, I got a little bit of bleeding. 
keep that in mind. I'm not saying that's gonna happen with all, all tumblers or with all types of removable vinyl, but I will say that that's what happened to me. And with the permanent, you can just get a little bit more grip almost instantaneously. I'm also gonna go ahead and wipe down our tumbler with rubbing alcohol so that we can get a really good application of the vinyl to the tumbler. Now, I really wanted to do a wrap on this tumbler. I have not personally seen anyone else do this with a wrap. I'm not saying it hasn't been done. I'm just saying I personally have not seen it. So I really wanted to go down that route um, for this. So I am using a little tumbler spinner like this just to really get a good even application of that citrus strip on the tumbler itself. And before I push that tumbler all the way on, I am gonna go ahead and grab some painter's tape and kind of cover down the edge right down here just to kind of protect the, the tumbler spinner from getting any of that scissor strip on it. All right, so now I'm gonna go in here and just weed everything out in reverse, basically creating a stencil with a vinyl. All right, so now for the transfer tape to apply all this to our tumbler. And I'm also gonna use some parchment paper to act as a barrier between our vinyl and our surface so I don't stick it down too early to the tumbler. Any parts of the vinyl that would be overlapping onto the other side of the design, I'm just going in here and kind of trimming off. So for example, this little piece of vinyl right here would be overlapping on to this part of the design right here. So I'm just going in here and trimming that off. Ultimately, you just wanna make sure that none of the tumbler is showing except for parts that you want to be etched. So for example, when I went in here and trimmed out this little piece, I accidentally took a little bit too much off. So I'm going back in here with some painter's tape and covering that up. I'm also going down here at the bottom of the tumbler and covering all that up as well. Now let me just point out real quick that you will see my little test spot right down here to basically see first off if it actually etched the tumbler or not. And second of all, how long it took to etch that tumbler. It could honestly be a huge range of time frames. I know that Delanda from Cricketing with Delanda she got some tumblers from Five Below that etched out in like less than 15 minutes. It was insane. Others will not do a thing until around like the 45 minute mark. So basically what I recommend is just putting a little test spot on there and then going in there with a little weeding hook or so every 10, 15 minutes or so, just to kind of see if it's actually starting to work or not and if it can actually etch everything out. And then at that point, once you can see clearly that it has etched all the way through to the surface, then go ahead and remove that citrus strip. Also, just for good measure, I am gonna go ahead and go around the, the brim of the cup as well. You also just really wanna go in here and make sure that all those little air bubbles, especially around the parts that you're etching, is completely laying down flat. If not, then your sister ship is gonna go ahead and leak up underneath that vinyl, giving you a really jacked up looking design. All right, so I think we should be good. I think I got most, if not all, of the air bubbles that were basically on the perimeter of our design basically covered up or smoothed out. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pour out a little bit of the citrus strip. But before we do, put on some, some protection, right? Put on some safety goggles, put on some gloves, even a mask if you need to, uh, before applying this down because the last thing you wanna do is get this stuff onto your hands or flung up into your eyes. Oh, and I'm also gonna go ahead and put a little mat underneath of this to really catch anything that drips off. And I'll also go over top of this with like a silicone mat as well. Now with this particular tumbler from that little test patch I did, I found that around 45 minutes for this is like perfect. Be sure to give this a really good little shake. And again, according to Adrienne over at M2C1 Designs, she says to put on this as a really thick coat. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so while I have done trial runs or test runs with this whole process, this is my first time actually doing it as a full wrap on a tumbler. So that's why I'm kind of going about it with this, this route, right? Like actually having it on a tumbler spinner because 
every one of my tests that I've done before, over time, like up until that 45 minute mark, all of this little gel starts to pull in certain areas or places onto the, onto the tumbler, especially if it's not a completely flat surface. So I'm thinking with this tumbler spinner, and we'll see what happens, but I'm thinking that this might kind of keep everything level and smooth across the entire tumbler. We'll cross our fingers and hope and pray and see. <laughs> So once that 45 minutes is up, I am gonna go back in here and just do a really quick test with my little weeding hook like so, and just to make sure that this did etch all the way through. From there, I am gonna go ahead and run water over this and peel off that vinyl to completely clean off the tumbler itself. And voila, we have some magic. So let me know what you all thought about this process down in the comment section below. Would you try this? Yes, no, maybe, maybe you land somewhere in between. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And also while you're doing that, be sure to stamp that like button if you liked this video. And hey, if you are new around here, stamp that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because y'all do not want to miss out on all of the crafty minutes coming very, very soon to this channel. Like there's some really cool stuff coming very, very soon. Thank y'all so much for watching. We love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.